We got the tea, so let's do this. All right, I have caffeine and it's early in the morning. Um, let's see how this works. Uh, again, I'm on the iPhone, so I can't tell if I'm supposed to look there or here, so I'm just gonna stare sort of straight at it. So if I'm looking at you weird, that's why. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick mini sort of wrap up of what has been happening in September, as in just work, 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 work. And I've actually, this is when I'm back with my, what I'll call normal schedule. So it's like anywhere from six to seven in the morning to about nine or 10 at night. So really just basically come home, eat and lay down. So I have not gotten a lot done, well, at all this entire month. Hence why this is like the saddest haul ever. Um, I did go to our friend Target and I got Debbie Maycomber's Love Stories. It's a Rose Harbor novel and let's see what it's about. Um, the person who owns the Rose Harbor Inn insists that Mark, the one that helps her out, is only a friend. So we have a little, you know, sub-story going on as well as the main story where 23-year-old Ellie Reynolds has come to Cedar Cove to meet a man she's been corresponding with and with whom she may be falling in love with. Um, another couple come, Maggie and Roy Porter, hoping to spark marriage in, or put the spark back into their marriage in the wake of past mistakes. So it's three characters... Uh, each of them will have a moment where someone wore their heart on the sleeve and took pen to paper and made all the difference. So that sounded actually pretty cute, so I picked that up. And plus it was an extra 15% off, and with Cartwheel, uh, I should just, this is not sponsored, but I use, um, Cartwheel, and I got an extra 10% off of my book orders. Um, the one I actually went for was The Martian, since I've been hearing a lot of talk about it. Um, I am sort of bummed completely that they have the now major motion picture, but this was the uh, the cover I basically wanted. Um, the other one had Matt Damon on it, and we all know this is one of my pet peeves. Um, I might actually splurge, go out into the world and get uh, a movie time in, but I wanted to read it first because yes, I'm that type of person. Um, on the magazine front, ooh, even more exciting. I only picked up one magazine this month and it was Women's Health. Um, and I always like that one and I just subscribed to Shape. And there was another one. Oh, I had gotten Lucky, which was one of my favorite. That sounded like a weird sentence. I got the magazine Lucky via subscription, but they just went out of business. So they gave me Allure, which I don't actually like. And now I have like all these Allures coming in like, Lucky, damn you. <laughs> Why did you go out of business? Um, now for the book that actually completely took me by surprise. I was not expecting this. Uh, boy, what would it be called? This reaction, I suppose, to it. This all envelopment, all encompassing, all consuming. Um, even my cat agrees. Wait, here he comes. He says he agrees completely. Yeah? Oh my. Alright, so let's start this up again. He may or may not do a cat eruption again because he's he's pretty happy today it's a little cooler and he's enjoying the day um uh, but back on track i'm going to talk about this book uh, this is De uh, william paul young's um eve a novel and i know nothing or i knew nothing about this book when i picked it up i actually just like ooh shiny pretty cover so if you sort of look at it i wonder if i can get the capture light it almost has like a sheen to the paper like a hologram ish sparkly stuff that's I'm still asleep even though it's morning apparently uh but I was like that's kind of a cool cover I don't care for this typography I usually don't like the scripty bit uh but I mean it's a pretty book and I was like oh okay and so here's the back of the story because I didn't know anything about this one uh when a shipping container washes ashore on an island between our world and the next John the collector finds a young woman inside Broken, frozen, and barely alive. With the aid of healers and scholars, John oversees her recovery and soon discovers that her genetic code connects with her to every known race. No one would guess what her survival will mean. No one but Eve, mother of the living, who calls her daughter and invites her to witness the truth about her story, and indeed the truth about us all. Uh, Eve is a bold, unprecedented exploration of the creation narrative, true to the original text and centuries of scholarship, yet with breathtaking discoveries that challenge traditional beliefs about who we are and how we are made. 
uh, as The Shack, and I don't know about his other book. Uh, apparently it's called The Shack. Awakens readers to a personal, non-religious understanding of God. Eve will free us from faulty interpretations that have corrupted human relationships since the Garden of Eden. Eve opens a refreshing conversation about the equality of men and women within the context of our beginnings, helping us to see each other as our Creator does, complete, unique, and not constrained by cultural rules or limitations. Thoroughly researched and exquisitely written, Eve is a masterpiece, or masterpiece that will inspire readers for generations to come. Um, this is not usually my type of book. Um, it's not usually in my genre. Uh, I do sort of enjoy the biblical stories. There was the, um, what were they called? The Orson Scott Card Women of Genesis series, and I don't think he actually finished them. I know I had two or three of them, and then true to Orson Scott card style he sort of peters out towards the end of a series which is why I do not like his series um, but this one sort of caught my eye it had a dystopian it was a sort of dystopian-esque novel uh, because I don't even want to call it dystopian well, I'm just gonna put the book down because I'm gonna talk about this for a little bit um, I wouldn't call it I would call it something more like a fantasy, science fiction, space, odyssey, style, dystopia, sort of like a new civilization. So if we can imagine our world, the next whatever, it's this sort of transformation style, like in between world that sort of is aware of both. Um, so the world creation in this was actually pretty interesting. Um, the characters were really interesting and they sort of delved into the nitty-gritty with that also so the character development was really good and the story was really really well crafted and I think I, this is one of the few books I actually read um the author's letter and the notes towards the back uh because I sort of wanted to see a little bit more about this one and he said essentially this book and concept took like 40 years to make because it's like the time you process everything etc and the work that goes behind it um what was interesting with the author i thought um he was born in canada and raised among stone age tribe by his missionary parents in the highlands of former new guinea and i thought well that's kind of interesting so he's coming at it from seeing different contextual points of view my cat singing again anyway sorry about that so anyway i think his childhood, if he was raised like this, and then sort of the progression of where he's at now, I think this sort of wove itself into the story, uh, because we had a sort of what I'll call an innocent point of view, a jaded point of view, and the scholarly point of view, because it was talking about the scholars, who they were really interesting in the book. So it felt like a normal dystopian-style novel uh, woven together with the story of creation. Uh, really interesting. Um, so interesting, in fact, I, I picked this up around 11 o'clock one night, the night I got it, actually. So this would have been Friday night, because it's now Sunday. So Friday night around 11, I picked this book up. I'm like, oh, I'm sort of just in the mood to read something. I'll just read like a chapter or two of one of the new books. Yeah, I did not put it down until like 2.33 in the morning. So not exactly what I wanted to be doing, but it sort of sucked me in no, more than sort of it. I just was enveloped by the story. Um, the ending, I'm going to have to reread. Uh, it reminded me of Little B and how I sort of, uh, I think it has a different possible um, layered meaning, basically. I'm not sure if the ending is how I interpret it. So I wanted to read it again today, like the last two chapters, uh, just to see if my initial interpretation was right. Actually, I might reread this book in general instantly instead of like waiting a little bit because I feel like I maybe missed some pieces because I was in that you know that stage you get where it starts like the avalanche and you start gobbling it up and you're like ah I must get through this as fast as possible uh, I think this is going to be one of those books I just sit and reread on a little bit slower pace maybe take it with me uh and read over lunch uh because I found it really interesting and I like the world development the character development um and just the spirituality level of this, I think, was... 
I've been sort of stressed lately. I've been, no, I've been more than sort of stressed. I've been really stressed lately. And it was a good sort of, okay, calm down. Everything's okay style book. So I'm not sure this book is for everyone, but at the same time, I'm like, I feel like this book is for everyone because I think everyone's going to interpret it to their life experiences at this point in time. Um, and I guess I think how I put it is like, just be open-minded when you read it and think about, I don't know, think about what it's saying basically. It, um, and I think it's just sort of sprinkled through the whole story. It's just a really weird, good, interesting, I can't stop thinking about it. And it's been two days basically since I finished it. And it was just such a surprise. And I love books like that because you're not expecting it to like be one of your favorite books ever. Um, you know how we always talk about the Pride and Prejudice and my Blue Castle. They're like my favorite of the favorites. This book actually challenged both of them because I love those, of course, in their own way. But this actually might sort of go into its own category. Like this is a special and unique book. And while it's not in the Pride and Prejudice Blue Castle genre, it is sort of rivaling them for, you know, they're jockeying in their favorite spot. So maybe I'll just have three books as my favorite, if that's possible. Um, it just went from, like, completely unassuming to, oh my goodness, this book was so good, I can't believe it was this good and I can't stop thinking about it. Um, again, I know I'm not sure it's for everyone, but... For a book that I haven't heard anything about, now maybe people have been talking about it, I've been really, 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 really out of the loop with the world lately. So who knows? Maybe people have been talking about this and I have no idea. I'm so behind in everything. Um, like YouTube and um, I was like the New York Times book reviews and I haven't been able to read them since August. So I don't know. Maybe people have been talking about it and I've just missed it. But um, it was just such one of those weird moments where you just were like, what's this book? Grab it, buy it have zero expectations on it and then be like, dang, that was pretty good. And, um, yeah, I would say if you're at the library or if you see it on sale, definitely pick it up and just see what you think about it. Uh, how they wind the story around both, all worlds, basically. So it's not just like creation, the beginning of time, blah, 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 blah. And it was actually partially a throwback to 2015 so it's like contemporary I don't know I don't know how to explain this book this is one of those few books where I'm just like I'm not sure quite what category it fits in um one thing I will say the style of writing and the sort of feeling I got when I finished reading it uh and I always get his name pronunciation wrong um Paulo Cole I believe it is he wrote The Alchemist and Valkyries, etc. I have all of his books too because I always like his. Um, if you wouldn't have told me this author's name, I almost would have thought it was his books, Paula Coles, uh, because it has the same storytelling and speech style. So it's like, you know how everyone has their own conversation when they write? Like they have that tone. They both had very similar tones. And when I left the book, I had that same feeling that I got from both of them. Uh, so that was really interesting. And very few authors, uh, Mitchell Abum, I think is his name. I read his Timekeeper and I sort of had the same sensation from that. Uh, that was more leaving experience with the book rather than the in-book experience. But the in-book experience of like how when you're reading The Alchemist versus this was actually remarkably similar, um, at least for me. So I left the book thinking a lot about the same things that uh, Cole makes me think about. And I don't know. It was just like a well-timed book. And I, maybe that's why I really like it. It was just well-timed in my existence. So who knows? So this rambled a little bit. Basically, I'm just saying this book had zero expectations. And it's going to be one of those books that I reinvestigate uh, throughout my years on, on this wild planet that we live on. Um, just like I do with Pride and Prejudice and with the Blue Castle, um, cause they each hit certain points that I need for my rereads. I notice I hit, like, if I'm in a certain mood, I have to reread a certain book. Um, this is going to actually be one of those. So kind of longer than my normal haul slash reviews, but it was actually such an interesting book. I just wanted to have a little bit of a discussion with it. And if any of you have read it, 
start a convo below because I sort of want to see what you guys thought about it also and if you do end up reading it let me know. Uh, I am actually not good on Twitter I'm just gonna say that but I'm really good with Instagram uh, and I've been doing those book a day photo challenges so if you want check me out there and we can have chit chats there or we can have chit chats below. I'm just curious to see what everyone's sort of saying about this book. All right, so there's September. I don't think I'm gonna be able to have time to do a wrap up this month, so I'm just gonna say this is September haul and the wrap up, all in one cute little package. <laughs> so hopefully you've been having a really fantastic September. Um, I should be done with my camera setup. My camera's set up for a completely different project for art. Um, the project should end filming by mid-October. Um, end of October at the latest and then that way uh, that way I'm not on an iPhone basically um, so it'll get a little bit better with our, our sort of quality um, but it'll meanwhile hashtag lo-fi and all that cool kid stuff that I don't understand <laughs> all right let me know what you're doing in the comments below and I will see you next time all right guys bye